Listen, my son. We call this uh, toy adventuring with Batman as super friends, but the, the bottom line is we really just wanted to talk about weird superhero merchandise. So, um, welcome, and uh, I'm going to do the introductions first. Uh, to my right is Danish Marie. Danish Marie. Danish Marie. No, that's all right. I'm a children's book illustrator, a cartoonist. I live in Toronto. And you're also a tasty pastry. I am a tasty pastry, but not right now. <laughs> uh, this is a this is a historical piece that I've done on the 200 years of fictional characters, and it's just exploring how characters have evolved with politics and technology and science at the time. And if you want to look at it in more detail, you can probably swing by my desk anytime. And where are we located, Danish? In Artist Alley. We are in Artist Alley, right at the end wall, right? Yeah, yeah. Do we know our table number? Um, Look for the giant raid sign. So R-A-I-D. You'll see a giant sign with a, a yellow uh, skeleton astronaut. And that is our studio, the raid studio, located in Toronto. We have a brick and mortar gallery and cafe at Bronson. Roncesville and Queen Street. So uh, if you have time, you're out of town or you're from town, stop by, have an empanada, and come see us afterwards to have a look at Danish's uh, amazing timeline. There's what, 300 different characters at least on there at last count? Approximately, yeah. Yeah, yeah, see who you can spot in there. And it's also an augmented reality piece, isn't it? Yes, yes. Uh, Apple has not approved it yet, but... Um, for the Android? For the Android can, right now, yes. You have a free app where you point at the, you point your phone at the poster and information pops up, right? Oh, yes, yes. There we go. And uh, excellent. And where, what's, your, what's your social handles? I am Danish, Danish Mo is my Instagram, and that's probably where you see most of my stuff. There we go. Am I speaking in the mic? No, I am. There we go. <laughs> yep. And uh, on the far right is my buddy, and no stranger to weird superhero merchandise, Mr. Sam Noir. Hi there. And uh, do we have my little comic strips up there? We do. Shout out to my uh, collaborator, Dave Francioso, at Dave Francioso Art. Uh, these comic strips are from Fandemonium and Fan Fiction, our little compilation of our web comics making fun of pop culture, including Batman and Spider-Man and Star Wars and Pokemon and all the favorite pop culture things. Again, stop by the raid booth. And who are you, fine sir? I am, um, oh my goodness, bad at PowerPoint. That is my name. <laughs> um, my name is Brian Heiler, and uh, I run Toy Ventures magazine, uh, and I've also authored books like Rack Toys or Knock Offs. Um, basically, it's always just been a fascination of mine, just finding the humor in a lot of this kind of merchandise and this stuff. And, well, toys are in my blood, so to speak, and, and I can be found at Plaid Stallions. That's the name of my site. And so, we are talking about Batman. And I've used this wonderful um, art. Murphy Anderson? Anyway, it's, it's showcasing, and I'm, I'm describing this for, for uh, Sam, it's showcasing the arsenal of things Batman has. <laughs> uh, Superman was definitely the first hero on the scene, but he doesn't really need anything. Batman needs everything. He has a lot of stuff, and then the 1966 TV show took that to a ridiculous uh, length with shark repellent and bat shields and everything just had a bat logo on it. So what that does, if you run a toy company, if you make something that's even not even related to Batman, and I'm, I'm showcasing the magic rocks from Batman Forever. Oh, that's amazing. Do you recall the scene in Batman Forever where <laughs> magic rocks were part of the scene? Um, you can sell it, and, and this is just one of, I'd say, a hundred thousand examples of 
slapping Batman's logo on something completely unrelated and selling it. And, and the reason we know they got away with it is when Batman and Robin came out, they put out another Magic Rock set and just changed the packaging and the ship. <laughs> and the, I, I'm assuming the first set must have sold well enough to you know, do another one. And this but is like 30 years after the Pet Rock uh, uh, fad, right? Yeah, this is more of like, um, like bottle cutting or one of one of those mm. like hobby kits and they just put you know like yeah, put yeah. Batman on it and kids will buy it and they did. Um, wasn't, wasn't there a Superman kryptonite where they just painted a rock green? Yes. And it's that supposed as well. to Superman going rock so you go buy what you could kill Superman. I never <laughs> understood that. I and it came in a box. And he's smiling on the box. And it's oh, like crazy really happy about this. <laughs> but there are limits. And I think this is the number one limit, and that is Batman All-Star Homogenized Milk. <laughs> I didn't see a cow in the Batcave, so I don't want to know where that comes from. And what year is this from, Brian? Oh, this is definitely the mid-60s. The mid-60s ah. was, you know, obviously with the uh, Adam Batman. West TV show, the Bat Blitz happened. And a lot of people thought it was a fad, but it just kept coming back. It came back in the 70s, it came back with a vengeance in the 80s. I don't think it's ever left since. There's just constantly Batman. Yeah, yeah. So, and so, in the Adam West TV show, am I remembering this correctly? Uh, Bruce Wayne would often be there with like a wine glass filled with milk, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely um, on brand of the character, but it's uh, just a weird bit of merch. <laughs> Batman's milk. Oh, that is good. Um, and then what, what we thought we would go through is some of the more strange interpretations of merchandising, like stuff that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And this is possibly one that actually I just don't get, and that is the Batman battery tester. <laughs> Your junk drawer is safe. Um, essentially, this is a, a, a battery tester, and it would light up to tell you if the battery was good or bad. These, you know, uh, This is uh, long before you could press the copper top. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they thought they would market this to children by making Batman's bat symbol light up. And it, it actually says, you know, have fun with this great toy, but it, it's very limited in its abilities to amuse. It's actually just a tool. And I, I find it possibly one of the silliest. Have you seen this one before? Well, it's incentive to get the kids working early, you know? I mean, uh... If at the at the industrial plant, yeah. if they're looking for like battery testers, they can uh, well, when I think of the hours, trick kids into the testing batteries. Yeah, when I think of the hours a day as a child I spent testing batteries. There you go. <laughs> How many kids out there would like to play with the uh, battery tester? Yeah, lots of fun. <laughs> hours and hours of fun <laughs> to be at testing batteries. Just a big pile of batteries. Just yeah. a big pile of old batteries. Yeah. I actually just bought a battery tester. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was a lot of fun. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Okay. Have you put your kids to work? Just no. testing a big pile of old batteries. Because we're going to be children. There you go. So the next thing I wanted to talk about, and this is very common in a lot of these kind of products, and that is, these are Batman safety scissors. I'm assuming they're just the ones that he makes Robin use. But like once you get these on the card, they are just safety scissors. The only connection to Batman is on the card. So these, these always drove me nuts. Like I did, the, the Planet of the Apes boomerang this doesn't have the word Planet of the Apes written on it. It's like I have to tell everybody. It's that I, yeah, reason. this is, was an official. Well, I can see Adam West having safety scissors. Certainly, it's, absolutely. It is but they problem. would have a bad logo on them. That's true, that's yes. true. Yeah. Uh, and then just hand them to Robin. <laughs> Use these. Now, there are other characters who get it worse. And I wanted to point out that um, one particular DC character has some really bad luck with merchandise, and that is Wonder Woman. And um, oh. if you think the... Batman safety scissors are goofy, you won't after you see what Wonder Woman got. <laughs> Is it the Wonder Woman scissors? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't oh, know dear. who thought this was a great idea or who thought this was hilarious. Um, I think I would prefer the guy who thought it was hilarious. But uh, in case of school supplies, 
I think the dorkiest thing I own <laughs> is the Batman slide rule. Now, for those of you who um, don't remember, these were used uh, prior to calculators. And I don't know how to use one because I grew up with calculators. Uh, but these were kind of, um, this was like one level of below pocket protector in terms of <laughs> a cool item you could be found with, you know. And um, I always thought it was funny that they, they put a big smiling Batman holding a bat on it. Like, <laughs> at, least, at least it has that going for it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I collect Batman school supplies as a result. And uh, if it, for the kids out there, uh, Batman used to smile. Yeah. He yeah. used to crack a smile every now and then. He'd call people chum. And what he's wearing is called colors. <laughs> it wasn't always dark yeah. and dank. <laughs> My dark and dank slide ruler. Speaking of dark and dank. Safety this... scissors. <laughs> Don't run with them. <laughs> um, this one really is pushing it in terms of, you know, the pet supply industry has also gotten into licensing. And I have some wonderful, you know, bat toys for my dog, but this is kind of next level. It is a bat cave hamster house. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So if your hamster, you know, parents were brutally eaten by your brothers and sisters, I assume, and hamsters, it was kind of gory. You can, you can have him train in his own bat cave and fight other hamsters. I don't, I don't know. I don't have words. I don't have words for this one. Were you aware of this one? No, that's insane. No, I, I couldn't believe it because well, I, you know. Well, we know about all the other bat pets. Like there's the uh, uh, bat Ace the Bat Hound. Ace the Bat Hound I, and. Uh, I, I think there was a bat cow. I think it's there, yeah. Our, our friend Art Baltazar created bat tiny cow. Titans. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, the yeah. tiny titans. But imagine Batman having that hamster in his utility belt. What would he do with that? I don't know. Just chase the Joker around. With that or hamster. or is this like an attempt to catch up with Eastman and Laird in the early you know oh that's late eighties and they're like adolescent radioactive hamster rat right. hamsters yeah. yeah yeah yeah. So I've got my bat hamster. What I also love is that many companies try to use Batman as a way to, you know, get kids to do the right thing in, in terms of, like, brushing their teeth. This is by Janx, a company that also brought you the Batman and Robin alarm clock. Oh, the, the wake talk, up. The it's time alarm. to get up. Yeah, waking up to a chat. And I honestly think that may have been a plan to get people to hate Batman. Because, like, I don't know if you like the thing that wakes you up every morning all that well. You know what? That was a cherished possession. Was it? Yeah, yeah. I recently found one at a Comic Con and I, I loved it. Not working, right? Yeah, not working. Yeah, I, I've been trying to get them fixed for years and no one will fix them. Now, this JNX uh, electric toothbrush is, is kind of hilarious. One, because I think uh, Robin is the toothbrush. <laughs> but also, and this is just kind of hilarious, they got a little weird on the back. Um, Batman's kind of given him a little bum push, which has, um, you know, become a point of hilarity. <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> Do you want to take a quick break to show what Danish is working on? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's yeah. flip over to the camera. Danish, what are you working on, my friend? Uh, I have Batman playing with a Barbie. <laughs> is he cashing in on the Barbenheimer thing? Yeah, yeah, and he looks a bit, he wants to make sure no one can see him doing that. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. It's a bit, it's a bit, uh, uh, Argonne. A little bit. Yeah. Someone is going to win this at the end. Who, who wants this piece? Does this look like a fun piece you'd like to have, kids? All right. On to the show, right? <laughs> Back to this. So, Batman also gets used for a lot of things figuratively that maybe he shouldn't. Um, these are the bat skates. And if you've ever wanted to look like you riding around on the husk of Batman, um, you know, I, I, I think I would have stopped at the logo, but they wanted to make sure that it looks like you wrapped Batman around your feet. And, uh, you know, um, these, these must have sold really well because they sold them for years. But again, 
Batman is passable. Wonder Woman's just look really weird. Yeah, they just they don't work. She kind of looks like the front of a ship. And her expression is like, oh God, what is this? Like it's just completely can I can I admit that I actually collect these uh, uh, roller skates? Really? Cause, well, because I used to be a, a, a inline uh, speed skater. Right. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, I, I actually as a novelty item, and they, yeah, they are terrific. They're, they're all agree. they're all bad, but I think no, one of them is the worst. So do you have the whole set? Because they uh, Spider -Man. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and was there a Spider Man? There's a Spider-Man and there's a Hulk. Oh man, I might be missing uh, Spider-Man and the Hulk, but I'll, I'll have to look in my bins to see what I have. But uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be admitting that I have these. They're horrific, aren't they? I, I can't, also, I can't imagine how safe these were. I mean, they, this is a plastic yeah, well, skate. They're also adjustable, right? So depending on how the, the kid grew, is that? Uh, yeah, but again, like, like how did these how good were these wheels on the average suburban roadway? Well you gotta wonder how we survived our childhood given the the, the, the things that, that are no longer being allowed to, to yeah. be used. So. <laughs> so speaking of things from our childhood, uh, crazy foam is <laughs> by and large possibly one of the silliest and greatest toys of the nineteen I think it came out in the nineteen sixties. But in the 1970s, they decided to pair it with superheroes. And basically what it is, is it's, it's, a, it's a mild form of shaving cream you take into the tub. <laughs> but it's the, the canister is painted like a superhero, and they essentially barf soap on TV. <laughs> it's all coming out of their mouths. Um, really not sure. You know, like Spider-Man was such an easy thing to have his web shooter there, but they just didn't want to go with that. But I guess, like... It's okay to have the Hulk foaming at you, uh, but I love these. I mean, they're just absolute nonsense, and that's that's the fun of childhood. Yeah, that's like the garbage pail kids thing. Everyone, as as a kid, everyone loves the barfing uh, funny thing, right? So. Yeah, but I mean, garbage pail kids. I think the the intent was there to gross it out, <laughs> whereas this one, I think, it, it, was, yeah, it was kind of unintentional. And they brought it back recently, didn't they? They did. They brought it back for uh, the Justice League. They did a, a very nice job of the heads and that sort of thing. I got to give my kids the same experience. Was it was it the the movie versions though? Or it was, was the it? Bruce Tim, I believe. Oh, okay. yeah, kind of, oh no, version. no, wait. It was just DC regular DC. Comics. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. There's been a few re-releases. Mm -hmm. I was gonna switch over to the. Uh, I'm gonna barf uh, soap on you. I love watching. <laughs> I love watching the wash. <laughs> oh, it's really cool. Yeah. I, Decided to risk that the last second. Oh, okay. <laughs> that wasn't planned? No. Oh, that's wonderful. So I got a little bit of a quiz coming up, and I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the most logical superhero toys that have ever come out. And that is from the 1970s. Uh, oh, I guess I can't do this contest. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay. Um, these are the Justice League summer toys that came out from a company called HG Toys. And what's weird about them is the attention to detail. They didn't just slap Batman's logo on it. They used other heroes to reach other markets. And it's something that's done more now than back then. So we've got the Green Arrow archery set, which um, I don't know why Red Tornado is in the center of the, uh, the, the bullseye there, but I guess they didn't get along. But um, it's absolutely pitch perfect to the comic book. Next, we have the Aquaman sea sled, and I'm sure Aquaman <laughs> didn't need that himself, but if you're gonna do a water toy, people you know, usually wanna see Aquaman. They don't wanna see Spider-Man. He's not known for his swimming. <laughs> um, and then third, and this is probably the jewel on the crown, and that is Wonder Woman jump rope. That looks like the magic lasso. So I guess you gotta tell us. Oh, that's actually really clever. It's yeah. really clever. And I can't believe we don't still have that. <clears throat> yeah. So I wanted to do a contest and I was gonna give away some puffy stickers and such. Uh, what do you think they included in the Batman set in this series? What do you think of hands? Let's see hands. Okay. <coughs> go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay, go ahead. They just put tiny pictures of Batman in the corner. Yeah, on, on what though? What toy do you think they gave him? 
Um, on the Wonder Woman skipping rope? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're right, but I want to ask, there's a fourth toy. It's for Batman. What do you think they gave Batman for a summer toy? Okay, we got a boomerang. A kite. A kite? What do you oh, think? Good one. Um, <clears throat> a frisbee. Okay, all these great answers. All good things. Um, no, they really went literal. <laughs> it is Batman batting balls. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to give everybody a set of these puffy stickers for um, for guessing. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that really is little, isn't it? Puffy stickers were the best. I'm glad they're still making them. Yeah. Actually, this factory closed down. Oh, did they? <laughs> So they're they're collectible, folks. They're collectible. Not, not, to, not to say you can't use them, but uh... Uh, feel free to use them. Your, <laughs> your trapper keeper. Um, so then we're going to get into uh, some of the more odd toy concepts. Now we talked about logical superhero toys. Now we're going to get into a little more illogical. And the number one thing I always laugh at is elastic Batman. Mm -hmm. um, Stretch Armstrong was really popular in the 70s. This was a, a latex doll filled with corn syrup that you could, they weighed about 20 pounds and you could pull them. Uh, they broke. Yeah. They broke a bunch. I, I had a moment where uh, me, my three brothers, or sorry, me, my two brothers, and a cousin grabbed one arm each from our stretch monster, the enemy of uh, Stretch Armstrong. We all pulled it. It snapped open and spilled corn syrup, ruined my mother's carpet. She was not happy. And this was the decade of deep pile carpets. Yeah, shag rug. Yeah, I, uh, I bit my stretch monster, or stretch arm <laughs> strong as a kid, because I needed to know what was inside. Uh, what was inside was gross. And uh, yeah, these are, these are toys that uh, do not stand the test of time. There's probably about, at best, 10 of these left. And you were saying it's food grade corn syrup, yeah. right? Well, yeah, it, 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 you know, it had to be something that if a child did eat it, it would be fine. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's a very basic corn syrup. And one of the funniest things I learned in uh, doing some research on this was I was talking to somebody who worked at Migo, the company that made this. They got sued by Kenner and they stopped production. And they said to, the, the fellow said to me, it's okay that we stopped production because the rats were getting to be a really big problem <laughs> in the factory. The stuff was not made uh, abroad. The heads were made, actually, in the United States. The, the bodies may have been made abroad, but they were filling them with corn syrup in, in, uh, in a warehouse in New York. And you have that much utility grade, you know, food grade corn syrup. In New York City. You're going to get rats. And they, they said it was just unbelievable and unbearable. So, uh, really interesting kind of toy line. I, I well, Plastic have, Man makes perfect sense, right? Plastic that, Man is, yeah, and I still have a Plastic Man. Uh, and there's an argument for Superman getting like exposed to red kryptonite, but uh, yeah, absolutely Batman as a, as a stretchable thing. Uh, there's, there's a boat. I, I'd say there's a boat. Like that red kryptonite excuse is really stretched thin in Superman <laughs> merchandise. It's like, like literally stretched thin. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit nuts, but yeah, uh, but the Batman stretch. I is, am not stretchable. Yeah, it, it just didn't make sense. And of course they did Hulk and Spider-Man as well. <laughs> the Hulk. The Hulk is so stretchable. <laughs> so I want to get into this topic. Uh, speaking of Batman, bat guns. Uh, as, as we know, most interpretations of Batman he is anti-gun, he is anti-killing. Mm -hmm. uh, there has been some you know, early stuff. Some Other than his first appearance, where he did yes. run around with a gun. But. Absolutely. Uh, and, and of course, Elseworlds and certain movies, you know, he mm -hmm. has had a gun. But the, the enduring thing about Batman is he is a non-lethal superhero. The, his parents were killed by a gun. He's yes. absolutely against guns. Yeah. However, toy makers like to make guns, and well, you know, I, I don't know if it's still commonplace, but, you know, uh, 
national periodicals, DC Comics, Warner Brothers, they like to make money. So they would uh, eventually kind of license these. This is 100%, this is a Batman rocket gun from Italy. <laughs> And it's essentially a Tommy gun with, <laughs> with missiles. And, you know, it's got Batman just shooting away. <laughs> and, you know, I say, oh, that's Italy, that's the 60s. This, this kept going. This just kept going and going. And this is um, a rack toy from 1988, oh, where wow. it's, it, it's a gun. They've slapped Batman's logo on that gun. And uh, you get targets of his enemies. And what, what really drives me crazy about this is, why is the Riddler worth half the penguin? <laughs> but yeah, I, I would assume that the Joker and Catwoman are on the other side. So this is like basically encouraging Batman to shoot his villains. And I don't know, it, it, there's something it's weird. It's off brand. It. Yeah. It definitely is off brand. Yeah. And then, um, well, we didn't want to get into bootlegs on this one. Because that's, uh, I could, we could go for hours on Batman bootlegs. And also check out our friend uh, Aaron Reynolds' panel tomorrow on Bootleg Safari. Bootleg Safari, exactly. And he may mention this toy, but I just can't do a weird Batman without the world's greatest water pistol. Uh, this is not officially licensed. It is a bad idea. And I also want to point out there is a Popeye and a mermaid in this series. <laughs> and the mermaid is topless. It is really an odd choice for children. But. And that was pre, like, Little Mermaid. It's not like Ariel from the Little oh, Mermaid. No, this is the 70s. Or oh, 60s wow. Or 70s. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this, but these are not, that is an unlicensed toy. DC did not say okay with that. And that makes sense. Uh, however, the. There's all kinds of wrong. The king of, I guess, off-model Batman toys, the greatest one that I can think of is by a company called Vanity Fair, and that is the Batman and the Joker electronic target game. Essentially what they did is they repackaged a toy they had of an Old West sharpshooter that <laughs> you had a gun, he was drawing for his gun, and you click it, and he falls down. I guess the Old West was starting to fall out of favor in the 1970s, and Vanity Fair licensed Batman and created this toy that maybe they should have thought, why, why are we doing this? In, in that basically the Joker is standing there with a knife, and you're to shoot him in the heart with your giant gun. So that is the, that, those are the accessories yeah, you get. Not very well thought out. No, I, it is a terrifying puppet of the Joker. It's, it's actually <laughs> the stuff of nightmares. Yeah, and then uh, you are given a gigantic handgun, and it says Batman on the front. That is it. <laughs> you are Batman, uh, but maybe, <coughs> maybe the very early Golden Age Batman, or... Frank Miller's, I'm not sure. Batman 66 would not have that in no, the no, no, this is this <laughs> Along with the sh that shark repellent. And this will be a favorite for you. And, um, there is, while Batman gets branded with guns, on the other side of town, Stan Lee also liked money. And this is probably one of my favorite Spider-Man toys because it's so wrong-headed. Another person who, obviously no fan of guns. Spider-Man, this is called the Exterminator. Oh my God. And it comes with Spidey's handcuffs, his Saturday night special, <laughs> and his badge, you know, Spidey's badge yeah. that he leaves, he has to leave on his boss's <laughs> desk when he gets fired. That's true. But this is like, I, could, I couldn't, I could probably fill this with Spider-Man guns. There's so many, and case in point, uh, we've got another here, this is, uh, the detective clicker special. <laughs> but my favorite is the target set. Uh, I'm not sure who the guy in the middle is, but the J. Jonah Jameson oh, no. target makes perfect sense for Spidey. Oh no. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but Spidey would never shoot J. Jonah Jameson. I know he, he's irritated by them, but the like, whole point is he, he sort of takes he takes it. Like J. Yeah. Jonah said, You're a menace, Spider-Man! <laughs> He's yeah. not going to shoot Jay. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, this is a little much. Off-brand, off-brand. Yeah, a little off-model. 
So, um, do you want to switch and show the final version? Yeah. Sure. Okay, so let's take a look at the sketch. There we go. That's great. What do you guys think? Did Dennis do a good job? I love that man's expression. That's the expression I made in the train this morning. There we go. Now, uh, is it time to raffle it off? Um, not yet. We'll do it okay. Yeah. No okay. Just got a few oh, more. Oh, you got a few more. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, let's keep drawing on. then. So, when he's not out shooting people, let's remind that Spider-Man also has a you know a social life and he likes to go bowling. <laughs> Do you own the Spider-Man bowling set? I do not. I was tempted though. It came back a few years ago, and I saw it at the drugstore. No was only, kidding, really. It was only ten bucks, and I, I, I have to admit, I'm a sucker for just because I collect Spider-Man. I'm a sucker for just oddball Spider-Man stuff. So. Another toy that loses its connection <laughs> to the Spider-Man the minute that bubble falls off. You know? he, he doesn't even have a bowling themed villain. Like it'd be one thing. Like there's Maybe a disco the electric company. Oh, maybe, yeah. but yeah, but even in the comics, he had like disco ball like themed villains and or disco. I, I have a feeling racer. that the person who put this toy together may have never read a Spider Man. No, I'm sure. Again, it's just slapping Spider Man on anywhere. They, they still do this, totally. Now, superheroes are all good for some sort of merchandising, but if Batman is the pinnacle of toy merchandising, then his polar opposite would be the Hulk. <laughs> and exhibit A here is the Hulk official utility belt. Don't get an unlicensed one. <laughs> and, you know, uh, the Batman utility belt concept was a license to print money. It's so, still being done. So the Hulk needs a utility belt to hold up those big purple ripped pants, basically. Which is usually like a rope. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, like it, Although, although they could have reused uh, Wonder Woman's rope to uh, just yeah, it, it like, have just been as a Hulk belt. Well, I think I think the Hulk utility belt should be a pair of purple cutoffs <laughs> with a ropey belt. I think would, I think kids would have loved that. Um, but yeah, you've got a gamma ray detector, which I believe that is makes just sense. a Batman uh, communicator painted green. You have wristbands. Doesn't just make like sense. The Hulk wears a belt buckle and <laughs> some kind of like pants. goggles, you know, um, because I think there's a secret message on the back of the box. This is not a very good toy, and um, kids did not like it. I remember stacks of these. Do you remember? Oh yeah, yeah, no, I, they were remaindered everywhere. That's why I owned one. I think. Yeah, <laughs> I had a lot of these utility sets, yeah. like utility belt sets. Now some of the other they were ones, fun though. Yeah, the Wonder Woman one, one is magical like it's just perfect but this one just doesn't make a lot of sense see because they keep trying to sell the hulk as if he's batman <laughs> but this is a superhero that uses his fists and doesn't have shoes <laughs> so i don't think he's flying the hulk helicopter i don't even think he could afford the payments with insurance <laughs> he's not a billionaire he's like not a batman. billionaire he, he doesn't have a home for the most part. <laughs> so, he is a homeless superhero. Yeah, he's, super yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's a journeyman. And, uh, <laughs> but they, they, there's, uh, this one kind of gets points for credibility, but it kind of dates back to um, Crazy Foam in the fact that it is a shower set of the Hulk. It comes with <laughs> Hulk shower gel, I can't imagine. And the Hulk never showers. Yeah, that, we that, know that, that. Makes me wonder what Hulk shower gel smells like. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the craziest thing is it, it comes with like a Luke shower Ray head Bell. cover that looks like the Hulk's face, and his mouth is open, <laughs> so you fit it over your shower head so that it looks like the Hulk is spitting on you. Like, yeah, it's a projectile vomit. It's a, I don't know. I don't think I'd like to wake up and do that. I, I don't know about you. A lot of the, the Hulk merchandise was a reach, wasn't it? A reach and a wow, you really <laughs> shouldn't have tried. And I'm going to end this presentation on my favorite, dumbest Hulk item I've ever seen, and that is the Incredible Hulk workbench. <laughs> uh, not only is this a bizarre item, uh, you know, the, I understand children like playing with toy tools, but I don't know how the Hulk regularly smashes things gets involved in home renos. <laughs> Maybe he's the demo guy and then you clean up after him, I'm not sure. But what I love about this toy is the sculpting of the Hulk's face mm -hmm. 
he's not, he's not angry. He's kind of just like, <laughs> not happy to be there. <laughs> being forced, it's like he's being forced to go to shop class. Yeah, I, I, it is a face I've made when I, you know, have to fix something around the house on a Saturday. You know, like <laughs> it's like chores. Solidarity Hulk, I get you, but I don't understand that for a children's toy. I feel like Nick Offerman would love this. <laughs> Nick Offerman loves woodworking. So, um, that what do we got? That is our presentation, sir. Thanks for attending. Yeah, and what, what else do we have here? Well, we do have, we're going to wrap it off the, uh, the drawing.